Hello everyone. So today we'll be looking into the high availability features what that Amazon provides. And one of the high availability features which Amazon provi provides is load balancer. So what is a load balancer? It is typically a physical or virtual device which is designed to help you balance the network load across multiple web servers. You can also use it for applications. It doesn't need to be only internet facing, but typically they are internet facing. So what are types of load balancers? Load balancers can be of three types. Application load balancer. This is very intelligent one. Network load balancer. These are used for extreme performance in network layer. And the third is classic load balancer. This is a old frame, old school type load balancer. And uh, typically these are not used until or unless you need it. So let's go ahead with application load balancer. So application load balancers are best suited for load balancing of HTTP and HTTPS traffic. They operate at layer 7 and are application aware. So basically if you think about your browser, you change your language to say Latin on the website, your load balancer can actually see what you have done and then it could go ahead and load balance the traffic across the Latin web sub servers. So they are intelligent and you can create advanced request routing, sending uh, specified requests to specified web servers. So next comes network load balancer. As I said, it's uh, uh, tip uh, for super fast performance and it is very costly also. So they are best suited for load balancing of TCP traffic where extreme performance is required operating at the connection level layer 4 network load balancers are capable of handling millions of requests per second while maintaining ultra low latencies as i said these are used for extreme performance next is classic load balancer these are the legacy elastic load balancers you can load balance HTTPS or HTTP applications and use layer 7 specific features such as X forwarded and sticky sessions. You can still use X forwarded for and sticky sessions but it's not application aware. We, we will talk about sticky sessions and X forwarded for uh, as we go on. You can also use strict layer 4 load balancing for applications that rely purely on the TCP protocol. Classic load balancers are not at all intelligent like application load balancers. You can use classic load balancers only when where you do not re really care about how traffic is routed and it's doing basic round robin as it will be cheaper. If your application stops responding, the ELB response the elastic load balancer responds with a 504 error. This means that the application is having issues either at the web server layer or at the database layer. So next we will check X forwarded for header. So here we have our user which browses from the public IP address which is given out there in the in our diagram uh, let's assume that public IP address has 124.12.3.231 uh, to the website and they hit the ELB the ELB has internal IP address of 10.0.0.23 and this is passed to the EC2 instance and the EC2 instance is logging the internal load balancers IP address of as our users IP address and this can be annoying because you might want to know your user's IP address. You might want to know your user's IP address where they are coming from. You can still get their public IP address. So how do we get it? 
this is possible through x forwarded for header and that will show your IP address. So let us uh, go, uh, uh, go to our AWS console and do it practically. So here we are in our AWS console. Before we proceed with our uh, classic load balancers, first of all let us make two instances at two different availability zones. I have deleted my EC2 instances which we launched for our VPC lab. So here we will go uh, with uh, T2 micro itself. Uh, okay. And we will be taking this in our default VPC. Our subnet, let us take it in US East to be and in here, let us put our bootstrap script which says that this is web server 1, it will be installing, it will be uh, updating the OS, it will be installing Apache and uh, as I said earlier, it will be starting Apache services and will take care that when the server restarts, uh, the Apache services restarts as well. So, this is the one, so and this will be inside our index.ht. So, So, I will just copy it and put paste it in here. Next, add storage. Storage, let it be. Uh, I do not need tags. Uh, actually, I do not need tags at all. Security group, let me keep it in my default uh, web DMZ group. Then, launch. Launch, let me see whether yes, I am having the public IP. A public so I will launch with this so it is launching one of them is launching let us and this is in US is to be so I will create another one in availability zone 2c subnet 2c and also in here I will put the bootstrap script and here I will mention this as web server 2. Next add storage, I will leave it as default, I will take from my default uh, security group, web DMZ group, I will launch it and the key pair. I will take this and right now my instances are getting launched. So one of them has uh, is already running and the other one is pending. So let us go to our load balancer. This is the load balancer and from here you, can, you need to create it. We will be going ahead with we will be checking pre classic load balancer and application load balancer. We will not be checking the network load balancer because it will be costly. And this is to remember that if you keep your load balancers on, this, this does not come under free tier and if you keep this on, it will charge, it will cost you much more. So first, let us go ahead with our classic load balancer. Let me give the name as my classic LB. Uh, well, before this, let me first let us first check whether our uh, web server is running or not. So, I will just quickly go to EC2. I will click in this. I will take the 
IP address and paste it in here. Let us check whether this is working on. So, web server one, one is working. So, likewise, I will check for this too whether my web server 2 is also working or not. So, this is also working. So, let us go to our uh, load balancer. create load balancer uh, classic load balancer i will give my the name as my classic lb uh, let i will keep this as my default vpc itself you can create an internal load balancer this means that they are inside our private subnets we will not do this now you can also enable advanced VPC configuration like this. This basically allows you to select which subnet that your e elastic load balancers will be deployed into. Always should have it should always have a minimum of two. We will also untick this. So the listener configuration it is taken uh, HTTP. Uh, port 80. We can also have port 4443 for HTTPS, but I will leave this as default. Uh, uh, the security group, I will be taking this uh, web DMZ. Next, configure health check. For this one, configure security settings, we uh, there is no need of worrying about. Here, the ping protocol is HTTP, ping port is this, and the ping path that is our index.html as it is our web page. The response timeout, let us put this response timeout time to wait when receiving a response from the health check the minimum is 2 seconds and the maximum is 60 seconds. So, let us put it as 2. Interval amount of time between health checks, the minimum is 5. So, let us put it as 5. The healthy threshold, unhealthy threshold, number of consecutive health check failures before declaring an EC2 instance unhealthy. So, this is from 2 to 10, we will be keeping 2, which is the minimum. Healthy threshold, number of consecutive health check successes before declaring an EC2 instance healthy. So, here we will keep this as 3. So, essentially in 10 seconds, it will detect whether or not our EC2 instances has gone down and it would take 15 seconds to go ahead and become healthy. Then next add our EC2 instances. Also we have enable cross zone load balancing, cross zone load balancing distribute we will be talking about this cross zone load balancing afterwards uh, uh, in our uh, as we go on. Cross zone load balancing distributes traffic evenly across all targets in the availability zones enabled for the load balancer and enable connection draining. So, the number of seconds to allow existing traffic to continue flowing is 5 seconds. So, we will take it as as it is and let us create it. So, this is created. So, here we have our DNS name. So, this is our DNS name. Let us check the inst 
we, uh, we need to put this in here in our browser and check whether this is working or not. So before that, let us check the instances registration instance registration is still in progress and so th this is out of service currently this is because it needs to go ahead and pass the health check so we need to wait for a couple of minutes for instance to come into service so we'll be wait we need to wait till then i'll pause the video until and unless this so there's no need of pausing it so right now this is in service so let's browse the dns address which i already copied so this time it came as this is web server 1 i'll hard refresh it see this is changing so it is evenly distributing traffic from one node balancer from one uh, uh, from one ec2 instance to the other ec2 instance next what we can do is that we can shut one of the web servers so let me go in here and let's assume let's i'm not sure which one is this i believe this is the second one I have not written it actually some anywhere. Let me just copy it. So this is web server 2. So this is my web server 2. So this one is my web server 1. So let me do one thing, let me just shut it down, I am just shutting it down. So currently this is in, my load balancer is in EC2 instance. So I will just refresh it and how many times I refresh it is still staying in web server 1 because it is not getting it it has marked the ec2 in uh, web server my EC, uh, web server 2 as an unhealthy instance this is because as soon as this instance is stopped it's going to stop serving http traffic to my load balancer and my load balancer is going to detect that using their health check and mark the instance unhealthy and take out of the load balancing pool that's why our load balancer is detecting and sending the traffic to web server 1 so since web server 2 is down And you can see in here my web server 2 is coming out of service and web server 1 is present. So that is all about our classic load balancer. So I will just delete it as of now and we will proceed with we will proceed with our application load balancer. So before we proceed with application load balancer we need to create a target group. So creating a target group, this reads your load balancer routes requests to the targets in a target group using the target group settings that you specify and performs health checks on the target using the health check settings that you specify. So let me give my target group as my ALV target and the target type you can take as instance as my ec2 instance you can take ip if you are bringing some other ip from uh, out of aws network or you can also use lambda function the protocol we are using in here is http the port is 80 
So, here what uh, what does this suggest is you could have a group of EC2 instances for your European customers and different ones for Indian customers, different language settings etc. You can actually create application load balancer to detect it and send it to the right groups. So, that, that is why the target group is intended. The health check settings. Let us give the path as index.html. Let us go to advanced settings. The port traffic is this. So, here let us give the healthy threshold as 2, then the unhealthy threshold as let us say 3, the timeout let us give us 5. The interval, see if the interval if I am given as 5 and the success code let me give as 200, this will, this might error out, see as you can see because health check timeout must be smaller than interval. So, here we need to, the interval should be greater than the timeout, let us create. So, this is successfully created. Let me do one thing, right, uh, let me go to again, go to EC2 instance, EC2 dashboard and uh, turn on my EC2 instance, my web server 2. So, while this, this is turning on, let us go ahead and create our load balancer right now. So, from here we need to create application load balancer my ALB let it be internet facing IPv4 address uh, listener availability zone let us skip all let us take all the availability zones tags let us leave the tag let us forget this here let us uh, let us take our web dmz group new let us take this in our uh, existing target group target type so these all things are have been taken by default and uh, these are taken by default next register targets there are no targets registered to this group. So, I need to register it. So, we need to register the target. So, first of all, let us create it. So, this is this has been created. So, right now, let us go to our target group. Let us go to target and then register our target. So, these are registered. So, currently the target registration is in progress. So, I will just pause the video until this is done. So, currently the status has changed to healthy. So, right now our web servers are behind the load balancer. So, but you might be thinking that uh, uh, how come this is intelligent than this application load balancer is intelligent than uh, our classic load balancer. So, just click, go back to load balancers, click on this load balancer, go to listeners and here if you s view or edit the rules, here you can basically set rules with which traffic needs to be routed to which group, like that you can set the rules. So, you can do it. So, but th uh, this will be, uh, we won't be covering this in our this in our video. So, uh, we will be checking whether our application load balancer is working or not. So, just paste it in here. So, it uh, let us 
hard reset hard refresh so this is changing and we can also check the same after by stopping one of our instances so web server 2 i'm uh, i'm stopping right now i should have stopped web server 1 to just to check because in our previous so anyways leave it so right now it is this is in web server 1 and how much ever time i uh, hard refresh it it will be in web server 1 itself say it got 504 gateway timeout because it was trying to go to web server 2 let me stop this too and you can see the error what we are getting as I said earlier in our slide it will give 504 error Five o four gateway timeout error. Well, this is changing, but we'll be getting this error. So that is all about our lab. So let's now focus to our uh, theory part. So what is a sticky session? As I already said, that we'll be covering this sticky session uh, classic load balancers routes each request independently to the registered ec2 instance with the smallest load sticky sessions allow you to bind a user session to a specific ec2 instance this ensures that all requests from the user during the session are sent to the same instance so why i might actually do this what happens if your application is saving something locally on your EC2 instance? Perhaps, perhaps it's writing a file or something and you always would then want that user to use the same EC2 instance. You can enable sticky sessions for application load balancers as well. But the traffic will be sent at the target group level. Example, if you've got two EC2 instance and one of them is not receiving any traffic you need to disable the sticky sessions next is cross zone load balancing cross zone load balancing as i already said we'll be discussing this uh, this can be divided into two parts uh, means uh, uh, we'll be checking uh, what is no cross zone load balancing what happens to this then we'll be checking with cross zone load balancing what we can do so in no cross zone let's start with a scenario we'll check in through scenarios based we got our user which is using our uh, which uses route 53 for our dns and this route 53 splits out the traffic 50 50 to different availability zones us east 1a and us west east 1b in each of these availability zones we got load balancers let's say classic load balancer and let's say in us east 1a we have four ec2 instances and in us east 1b we have one ec2 instance now since we don't have cross zone load balancing enabled load balancers can cannot send traffic from one availability zone to another us east 1a will take its 50 percent and then send to four ec2 instances and us east 1b will send it to one ec2 instance this means four will get 12.5 percent of traffic each of them whereas the poor ec2 instance in 1b will get overloaded with 50 percent of the traffic the reason being elastic load balancers cannot send traffic to another availability zone so with cross zone zone load balancing we got our user 
and through route 53 it will be sent into 50 percent of traffic to east 1a and east 1b and we got our load balances four ec2 instances in there and the one ec2 instance in here and it will be uh, dividing the traffic like this and just with cross zone load balancing we can divide the traffic so that no ec2 instance gets overloaded so the traffic is divided into equally into all the instances next is path patterns you can create a listener with rules to forward requests based on the url path this is known as path based routing if you are running microservices you can route traffic to multiple backend services using path based routing for example you can route general requests to one target group and request to render images to another target group. So here we got our user which is sending traffic to route 53 and 100% of this traffic is being sent to a load balancer in US East 1A. And this would be an let's this would be an application load balancer. And since it's reading the URL path and essentially it's sending its traffic to two different availability zones. Let's say in US East 1 we got all the traffic that goes to myurl.com. But what you want to do is configure so that traffic that is going to myurl.com slash images is going to your media ec2 instances in us east 1b which is on a separate availability zone so in order to do this you need to enable path patterns that will send just the normal path myurl.com to your four ec2 instances but all the images traffic will be will go to separate availability zones whenever your request comes for myurl.com slash images so what are the things to remember is the types of load balancers so application load balancer which is in layer 7 network load balancer which is in layer 4 and it has super fast performance classic load balancers sometimes referred to as elastic load balancers it is it uh, generally works in layer layer 4 or 7 5 or 4 error on classic load balancer means the gateway has timed out this means application is not responding within the idle timeout period this can be because of the web server or because of your application or your database server database if you need ipv4 addresses of your end user look for the x forwarded for header in the elastic load balancer Instances monitored by ELB are reported as in service or out of service. Health checks check the instance health by talking to it. All load balancers have their own DNS name. <coughs> Pardon me. All load balancers have their own DNS name. You are never given an IP address. Sticky sessions enable your users to the same EC2 instance. It can be useful if you are storing information locally to that instance. Cross zone, zone load balancing enables you to load balance across multiple availability zones. Path patterns allow you to direct traffic to different EC2 instances based on the URL content in the request. So that is all about load balancers. If you like my video, please do like, subscribe and share it. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.